Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks again for watching. I am Dana, if you didn't know from the name of my channel or watching, <laughs> and I am here to talk about sunscreen today. So I've got a full product review. This one is just a single review. Sometimes I do hauls where I combine similar types or styles or do a comparison. And then sometimes I also like to do single product reviews. So if you're just searching for this one particular product, you don't have to go through every other part of the video to find it. It's all here right in one video. So with that said, I am reviewing the Zit Sticka <laughs> Mega Shade. It's always fun to say the name of this brand. If nothing else, like Zit Sticka, I mean, obviously, like it doesn't make sense for sunscreen, but I like saying the name. So that's what we're reviewing today. And before we get going, like I always ask, please do like this video. You can watch till the end and then like it, or you can like it now. <laughs> and then also, um, no, don't review my channel, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> So that does help me, of course, and I appreciate you guys watching this video. I almost always forget to do the daily Dana fact. I know it's starting to feel very conceited, so I might change this, but the whole goal of that was just to like let you guys into my life a little bit more. But I'm probably going to be changing that up because A, I feel like I'm running out of stuff to talk about about myself, and B, it feels a little weird. But for today's little fact, um, I am like my... My ethnicity, I guess you would call it, is kind of like a mixed bag of things. But I always kind of say that I'm about half Greek, which I know I'm like less than half, but my grandmother's side was Greek. And then the other part is like Russian Ukrainian. So I'm very European, <laughs> um, but kind of like Southern European. So I do have like more olivey, medium skin tone, um, and I tan very easily. So that's my background. <laughs> okay, guys, so what do we always do? We put our hair up. Hair goes up and let's start the review. So this is the Zit Sticka. It comes in a nice glass dropper bottle and it is SPF 50. And as I've been doing and I will continue doing, I have a list on one side of all the topics that I'm going to be covering and I do this for every sunscreen now. Um, and that way you just have an idea of what I go over and the bases are all covered, hopefully. So this one is SPF 50, like I said, and it does come in a dropper bottle. And as you can see, it's quite liquid. Um, that is one thing I will get into in a second, but it retails for $40. Um, you can also get it, I think for 36 ish dollars. If you do the monthly kind of referral or not monthly referral, monthly subscription service. So you can get it a little bit less, but of course that assumes that you like it and want to keep purchasing it. And it is 50 milliliters or 1.7 fluid ounces. So I'm just going to start putting it on. And as I like to do, I really start with small, thin layers, and then I can try to build up if I need more. And I honestly have kind of, I've gone away from the two or three finger length strokes because for me, I have a whole video on it. I will link it above, but for me, it's not the, mo I, I understand why people do it, but what happens for me is I get a whole bunch of it on my hand on the two finger lengths. And then even if I'm trying to do thin, small layers, it just doesn't happen. So, you know, you can do the measurement type where you put it into a quarter teaspoon, or you can just put it on in sm small, thin layers and trust that you're gonna get enough on. <laughs> okay, let's take a little break just so I can read you the uh, filters. So reading from my notes, the filters in this are 7.5% homosalate, 7.5% oct octinoxate, sorry, 5% octosalate and 3% zinc oxide. If you know anything about SPF filters, the first three are all chemical or called organic filters. And the last one, zinc oxide, is a mineral filter or inorganic filter. So this is a combination product. Okay, next up, scent. <laughs> this one, it's got a strong scent. Um, and I'm just getting more on my hand so I can kind of dab it on like that. So this one has a strong scent and I would say that the scent is a combination of tea tree oil and a little bit of thyme. And those are two essential oils that you can see in the ingredient list. And they do actually call out the, the tea tree oil. And tea tree oil is actually a proven antibacterial essential oil or like oil. So it does help with um, acne. And that's exactly why they have it in there. They, they mentioned that they have it at an appropriate level, which I would hope so, because essential oils can be, you know, a little extreme for some people's skin, but it is in there at, I'm sure, a safe dermal limit. 
Okay, so now that we have a little bit of a base on our first layer, I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna go through the ingredient kind of call outs in it. So before I start going through this, I think one of the main claims that they try to say is this one is they say it's a sunscreen serum. And to that point, it's kind of that you are meant to replace your serums in the morning with this. So it's like a two for one. You're definitely getting moisture and hydration in this product. So we have hyaluronic acid, which I think most people know out there, it's a really great product for helping with hydration. It binds water to it. And then they also have ceramide NG, which they call their little hydration, hydration station. So those two in combination are going to help you with the moisture retention and kind of overall look of plumper skin. And then, like I said before, there's tea tree oil, which is antibacterial, really good for acne prone skin. But again, if you have sensitivities to it in particular or the scent of it, it might not be for you. They kind of seem to do like little combinations. So they did the hyaluronic acid with the ceramide, which is fine. And then the next one they did, which is also a very common kind of combination is ferulic acid and vitamin C. And they have the vitamin C in the form of kakadu oil, which is from plums really good one it has apparently the highest amount of vitamin c for a natural fruit vitamin c helps prevent from free radical damage it's a really great thing to put on in the morning and in combination with a sunscreen you're getting even less free radical damage and more protection from the sun and then they also have niacinamide which is vitamin b3 and that helps with soothing skin reducing irritation and inflammation and redness it's a good product you're going to see it everywhere and then colloidal oatmeal, which is also another soother and softener. So one thing that they do mention, because they kind of have a call out about the mineral filters and then the chemical filters, which is fine because that's what they have in there, but they have it wrong. <laughs> and this is actually, it's pretty much wrong everywhere. They say that physical or mineral filters block UV radiation and light. Not necessarily true. They block about 5% of it and the rest of it, the skin absorbs. And then they say the chemical filters absorb the UV radiation, which is correct but they also block some. That's a very common myth about sunscreens and I will try to dispel that whenever I see it, but it is important to know that mineral filters don't just block UV light. They absorb it just like the chemical ones. So yeah, that's wrong. Okay, so the finish. <laughs> this is the first layer and it is hot and humid where I live. So it's this is definitely a little dewier than I would maybe love. Um, that was one layer. I do think it dries down. Um, if I just sit in the air conditioning, oh yeah, I'm putting more on. And this one actually, you notice how this time I kind of wasn't thinking, I just went in like with my fingers, like a normal method. It does an okay job. Like you can still do that and you won't get as much um, of a white cast but I always recommend not to, and I don't even take my own advice all the time. So <laughs> it definitely has more of a dewy finish, um, but I do find that while it does look pretty intense at first, it does dry down if you just give it a little bit of time. But the, it's, it's very interesting that they would make it like this. I think it's because of the fluid nature of the product, which is fine. I really love really like easy to spread, not chalky, not heavy sunscreen. But it's curious that they do that because this one is targeted 100% to acne prone, oily skin. And then like your face looks like this. I think a lot of people that have oily skin, this is not the look that they want from their sunscreen. <laughs> but it does dry down. And I know this is not like the best um, representation of it. If I were to sit for like another 15 minutes in my little room, the air conditioning is kind of wonky. So if I were to sit out in the air conditioning, I would have like less of a oily finish though. So the cast, it's actually not bad. I don't understand though why they put zinc oxide in it because without it, I think you would have even less of a cast on people with darker skin. So for me, I don't really have a cast, but I, I, I feel like there's just like this weird like undertone of white or like gray. And that's probably just because on medium or darker skin, that's what you're gonna get when you have zinc oxide. So I think they put it in there just so they could be like, oh, mineral filter, like clean beauty. I think they probably could have done without it. I'm not sure why they did it. That's just, to me, it's like a confusing formulation part. But that said, like the best way that for me to know if there's kind of a cast is to look at my eyebrows or the, my, my hairline. And like right there, I can see just a little bit. And that's probably just because I didn't blend it there. Um, but it blends so easily that a cast for me is not a big deal with this one. So how would I wear this one? Um, <laughs> well, I think it's definitely going to be more of like a cooler weather sunscreen for me, just because I have normal 
kind of oily skin these days, especially in the heat and humidity of the summer. Like this is just not something I want to walk out of the house looking like, but I also love glowy skin and it does kind of, it does tame down. So I could wear it on just a normal day, like going out shopping or the grocery store, that kind of thing. Um, I would not wear it when I'm like doing active sports or working out or even like at the pool, just because I feel like this one is absolutely not water resistant or sweat resistant and it just kind of like drips off my face. So it's kind of like for more chilled days and or being inside the house. You do get a lot of benefits from the ingredients. Um, I don't necessarily ever say that a sunscreen doubles as your skincare, but this one does have some pretty good ingredients in it. So if you're just sitting inside, not really like out and about in the sun, this would be a good option. And also I found that it works really well under makeup, but most sunscreens for me do work well under makeup. The only time they don't is if I feel like they're starting to pill before I even put makeup on. So this one works fine for me. And my rating for this is it's a solid like seven to seven and a half. And I think it's one of those sunscreens where it kind of just depends on your skin. So it could be higher or lower and kind of depending on what you want or what your skin needs. And that's one of those things I can't really tell you. It's just one of those things you have to try out. Um, but hopefully these kind of suggestions and what it looks like on my face and all these things help you in deciding if you want it or not. I do think it's a little pricey, like $40 is, that's like super goop levels. So that's one thing to consider. I don't know if I would recommend it just out of the bag to like anyone who asked, but I think it's a solid sunscreen. Um, I, you know, I just have a few issues with it that might not work for me as well, but might work for plenty of other people out there. Okay, so 15 minutes later, and I feel like the shine is still there. It's a little bit less, but it's not intolerable. It's definitely shiny. That's one of the things that confuses me about this. I don't understand why oily or acne prone skin would want this when I have, I would say very normal, sometimes oily in the summertime skin. And I already look like this. Um, again, I don't hate it because I love the glowy look, but it is something to consider if you do want more of a matte finish. So that's kind of like one of the biggest confusing things about it. Um, it also doesn't set down. So like when I touch my face, it's still, wet that's another reason that i say like for me it's not something that i work out in it's a very kind of sedentary sunscreen but it's not a bad sunscreen it's just particular it's a particular sunscreen for particular purposes and people <laughs> so that's about it guys i hope this helped i hope that you have learned something maybe you're gonna buy it maybe you're not i don't know and i will see you guys in the next video bye